are live. Welcome to Daredevil Season 3 Thoughts. So, spoilers for Season 3 throughout the video. I'm not only going to be spoiling the episodes I'm talking about. It's possible I'll spoil the finale while talking about the season opener. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, but not for anything released after this season. And... Uh, let's see, so, um, yeah, that, yeah, so the, yeah, excellent season opener, excellent finale, and ex excellent overall season, really, yeah, three great seasons here, and starting with the very first episode of the season. Episode 1, Resurrection. Epic opening shot. And it's a good detail that, you know, Maggie wants to call the cops until Lantham tells her this is John Murdoch's son. And, yeah, um, I gotta say, Joanne Whaley, I haven't seen her in anything other than this and the two Willow, you know, the Willow movie and the Willow show. So, yeah, that's, it's interesting to see. But, yeah, she's, you know, she's good at this kind of, like, she gives you a hard time, but she does, you know, she does back it up. She's not just bitter for no good reason kind of character. I, I, yeah, I wonder if that's just the thing that, she does, or if it's just completely, you know, it's the only two times she's done it, or what. And, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I'm I glad that we get a flashback where we see Matt answer Karen's questions after finding out he's Daredevil. And he still think Frank goes too far, and she still empathizes with Frank. Yeah, actually, yes, yeah, so I I'm recording this. I literally just got done watching the finale. And yeah, that is, you know, the the season opener sets that up. And then the, the finale, it is, you know, he was actually going to kill Wilson Fisk. And then Karen told him, you know, I've never gotten over the death of my brother. And that wasn't even an act, you know, she didn't mean to. There's no point, there, at, at no time in the flashback or... I forget if they mentioned that maybe there was some other time where she felt maybe she was partially maybe she partially did it on purpose because she sometimes resented him or something but yeah you know so, so that's a really great that you know it's not it's not like reminding the audience because we know it's we're not going to forget something like that but it is setting that up that there is still that conflict you know at the end of season two, when he told her, he did still think that killing was completely unacceptable. And and she still thought that, you know, Frank... Yeah, because the, the, you know, she can't stop Frank. Yeah, yeah, she did. She told Frank that he should stop killing near, I guess, the end of season two of Daredevil, I think. So, so yeah, you know. And now the... Ah, it's running the tip of my tongue. Um, so, so yeah, I I really appreciated that, and and yeah, it's no wonder she, there there it was. No wonder she empathizes with Frank. You know, she knows how difficult it is to live. You know, the you know what what's that quote? There's no ain't no living with a killing. And yeah, let's see. I, I liked the, the you know, <laughs> yeah, Foggy shows up and it's like, okay, you, you know, I, I didn't, what was it? I didn't trick you. It was a ruse. Okay, you rused me. Karen, as much as it hurts to say, you're a reporter. For a fraction of a second, I thought that was where the sentence ended. Wow, that would be brutal. But yeah, you know, he's he goes on to say, as a reporter, you know that, that you know. <laughs> Let's see. And Matt talks about Job calling him a pussy. He he might even call his god shitty. 
but only because self pity. Let's see. And yeah, we see, you know, an omelet being cooked, the plate materializes, and Fisk is told Vanessa's considered an accessory. And, you know, yeah, it's he misses making her omelets because she really likes omelets. So, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, Matt now has only partial hearing. It wasn't interesting because, like, basically... Uh, but before now, we've only... Se before this episode, we've only seen in flashbacks that he struggles with this you know yeah with with the with with being blind we we have they haven't devoted a lot of time to it because in the very first episode of the show of of the first season we see him already as daredevil you know he's he's not so yeah it was it was interesting to to take away you know some of his hearing and now he you know yeah, and Maggie treats Matt incredibly badly because she feels that he should keep fighting, not giving up, no matter how bad he has it. Someone really needs to explain to her that this is a Marvel Netflix show where, you know, with the rule prescribed 13 episode season instead of the exception of 8 or 10, which are both better. And as such, at the start of the season, very little is going to happen. And, yeah, and we see uh, Matt use touch to hear what is very far away. Let's see. And... Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so the... the um, Yeah, you know, in after watching the the first episode of the season, I watched the trailer, and it shows you know that that um, Kingpin sends out. I guess I'll either call him Dex or Bullseye throughout this video. You know, it's not really. It's pretty clear that they were going to turn him into Bullseye. So yeah. I'm, I might be calling him Bullseye a bunch in this. Rolls more off the tongue than fake Daredevil. But, but yeah, you know, he sends Bullseye as a fake Daredevil to ruin Daredevil's reputation. I mean, it is a season of Daredevil. Season 1 also had Fisk try to ruin Daredevil's reputation. Season 2 had Schoonover try to ruin Frank's. So, yeah. Let's see. That brings us to... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Episode 2, please. And, see, yeah, I quite like the fade early on in the episode where it looks like Matt and Fisk are looking at each other. And we get that again at the very start of the finale. So, yeah, quite appreciate and approve of. And... Great use of out-of-focus shots to underline that Matt can't use his super senses as well anymore. And Karen relates to the celebrity, explains that people think she killed her brother. And let's see. Yeah, and, and Daredevil goes on another mission. He's still struggling, but this time he does win. Tells the celebrity at the hospital to go identify the criminals. God didn't help us. I did. That means you are eating, sleeping, and shitting when I say, hopefully not all at once. And Fisk gives yet another great monologue. They really should put him in police transport more frequently. He just, each time, just spot on monologue. Very tense and suspenseful attack on the transport. The Albanians want revenge. Very claustrophobic as we are stuck in the car with Fisk. And he is rescued by Bullseye. Like, you know, it's not... We know that part of the reason why it's being done like that is that the budget just... It, they're not going to be able to do, like, the the kind of 
thing that we we see in for example mcu movies you know um yeah uh for example the the um yeah uh let's see yeah both winter soldier and civil war had come out by the time this show was on this season was on so yeah you know those do have some fights between the costume characters and you know a bunch of armed guys with with you know a lot of training and such they have significantly more money and time for those kinds of fights so you know we're not getting like the the in in civil war when when the um when Steve Rogers and Bucky have to get out of this the the place that Bucky has holed up at and you have these um i th i think they're called don't, don't they say they're like german special forces or something like that with no compunction about asking nicely and yeah you know that's amazing looking and we can clearly tell what's going on but they also had a much bigger budget for that kind of thing so here you know they they can't put on that kind of a show so they put the camera inside the car and and it's like fisk there's no way he's gonna get away like the car is i forget if it's upside down or it's like on the side but like there's no he, he's not gonna just be able to get up to the, the yeah let's say he could get free which he also can't if he could get to the wheel he still wouldn't be able to just drive away from there so you know the, seeing them closing in and then be taken out like holy crap that was intense and that brings us to episode three no good deed and let's see yeah we open on kingpin showering see him being moved to the penthouse and karen suddenly realizes that she and jason are supposed to be on a date and like the the You know, the the Jason immediate, like, the thing that he's, it's not necessarily that he thinks it's wrong for them to be on a date, but he's like, I want you to know, Karen, I didn't know they were doing this. I swear, I didn't trick you into it, you know, it's such, like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, um... Is it a boomer move? I guess it's kind of a boomer move, right? To to, because they're not even like, let's let's see, it's not that I don't think they're Jason's parents. It's it's Ellison and his wife. I think, is it maybe cousin or or some kind of? There's some kind of relation, you know, and Karen isn't related to any of them, so they just yeah. Let's see. And Marcy sweetly consoles Foggy, who still wakes up having dreamt that Matt was still alive. Take a pill. Yeah, I bet you you will. I, I really appreciate, you know, when we first met Marcy, she was not that nice of a person. And it was basically, you know, you are... We, we're social animals, and we take a lot of cues from the people we're with. And she was surrounded by scummy lawyers and yeah she you know at first she was a jerk now that she's spending so much more time with foggy you know she yeah i, I figure he probably in general has a ten like he rubs off on people let's see and matt imagines kingpin thinks that god is doing this to hurt him like job I, I like the detail, you know, the, the protesters outside the penthouse demanding Fisk go back to jail and how, you know, different characters are encouraged by that or frustrated at that and that kind of thing. It, it, you know, it feels like the kind of thing that would happen in, in real life in, in this situation. Let's see. Yeah, and, and Karen confronts Ray which does somewhat color their relationship later on. Like, even when they're 
working together. It's still like, okay, I, I'm glad that we agree here, but let's just move on. Let's not... Let's see. And, you know, Matt manages to get in because he heard the key combination and dressed up. And it's a good detail that, like, you know, the, the guy asks him for a specific tool and, like... He figures that it'll probably buy him more time if he gives the tool to the guy and then walks off instead of just, you know, going down the... But, you know, he doesn't know what tool, like... So, yeah, that's a... Let's see... And... Yeah, Daredevil interrogates Donovan, learns that the deal is so that Vanessa goes free, and he does a series of stealth takedowns, and finally just has to fight more openly to get away from the FBI. Do you believe people can change? Sure, diapers, batteries. I believe people can change, but only for the ver worse. I could have changed the world if it wasn't for this verse. And Bullseye tells the therapist that he's dating Julie, the bartender, but then we see that he's actually stalking her. And the episode ends on Donovan telling Fisk that Daredevil is back. I quite like the, the element of, like, because basically, you know, at this point in the, in the, se in, in the season, I thought that, um, that Dex was attracted to Julie, but later when he says, no, no, I wanted to, like, be like you and then he admits okay that also sounds creepy but you know he he saw in her a north star and yeah that brings us to the next episode blindsided let's see and we open on a room check of Fisk. And after, as they're leaving, Bullseye looks back and Fisk is standing there staring right at him. Well, hello, new sleep paralysis demon. Let's see. And Marcy tries to help Foggy, suggests he run for DA, be really public so Fisk can't get to him. Which does make sense, even if it is scary. But yeah, I really appreciate, like... Again, like, Marcy, the first time that we met her was, you know, Foggy basically having to go back to her. Not, not like, begging and pleading kind of thing, but, you know, they didn't part on the best terms, so she's gonna rub, and rub his nose in it anyway. And, yeah, like, the, the, um, what's the word? You know, yeah, yeah, she says some harsh things to him, then he says some harsh things back. Although, I guess, they weren't really, like... Yeah, I think they were at, like, the 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 skill level and how much money they're making, how, how good their case is, that kind of thing. It wasn't, like, extremely personal kind of thing, you know. And, and now she's really trying to help him with legitimately good advice. And... You know, I, I just, I really like that she's not just the girlfriend or something, or a prize. And Matt gets into the prison using Foggy's card, asks Michael to introduce him to Vic. And, you know, yeah, that's when we realize at least part of the reason that he gave Foggy a hug was to get the card from him, you know, so that... Or the, the wallet, which had the card. So, yeah, that was... Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's a bit of a thing in these. There was that in Jessica Jones Season 2 with Malcolm giving a hug just to lift a card, an access card. Now... Yeah, and, and because Foggy Karen realizes Matt is still alive, she, she's understandably furious that he's been keeping it secret. And Foggy says Matt isn't himself. And Matt realizes there's a camera in the nurse's office. The nurse attacks him. 
Fisk calls, tells him he can't forgive threatening Vanessa, and we get the minutes-long one-taker of the prison escape, which is obviously the best hallway fight thus far. Vic and Matt talk. Matt finds out Fisk bribed a lifer for shanking him. And the escape has a lot of chaos. I can't help wondering if it's inspired by natural-born killers, just like the prison escape in the first Kane and Lynch game and the 2004 Punisher game. Who eats a burger with a spork? What's a spork? And Foggy speaks to the cop union. We see them start to sign up. Now, some may wonder, why doesn't Blake try to stop Foggy's speech? That would make it look like he has something serious to hide. And Karen pulls a gun on the cat callers, which is... Yeah. Let's see. And, yeah, Karen gets the name Felix Manning. Dex hears the interview, hears Fisk lying for him, claiming it was self-defense. So he demands Fisk tell him why. Fisk makes an appeal to him. And we close on Matt waking up in the taxi, and the driver now drives it off the pier. And that brings us to the next episode, The Perfect Game. Holy crap, when we see the cab from inside filling with water, that's incredibly scary looking. And we see Bullseye stalking Julie. A lot of men approach women like the man is the predator, the woman is the prey, and law enforcement training can really worsen that instinct. And Felix threatens Karen. She continues to struggle with keeping enough distance from the really dangerous people. And... The FBI questions Karen. After a series of questions, am I under arrest? Are we playing questions only? And we and Fisk see Bullseye as a child, an orphan. Some part of him believes that if he plays a perfect game of baseball, his parents will come back to life. So when the coach pulled him, he killed the coach. And Mercer, the therapist, diagnoses him with BPD, psychopathic tendency, gets him to practice empathy, and later on the date we see him still fake it with Julie. He didn't learn empathy, he just learned how to fake it. And years later he loses the therapist and, you know, wants to kill her because he feels like she's abandoning him. Let's see. Yeah, and, and we see Bullseye working at the suicide hotline comes very close to suggesting that the suicidal person killed the stepdad because he he hates his, his stepdad. But a smile from Julie gets him back on the program. I really loved just, like, it starts, you know, we see him have the, the, the program... This is going to have to stand, yo, he's, he's got the program, so he's like, okay, point one, point two, but okay, yeah, so, okay. So, this, the stepdad, you know, puts away the, the, and then Julie's like, and then he gets the, uh, um, okay, yeah, so, um, that, that was, a uh, yeah. And... I really love the use of negative space when we watch Julie eat pizza, Dex eating pizza, pizza, Wilson in the middle. Julie recognizes Bullseye, who panics when he isn't sure he can be with her soon, and they go on a date. Small world, especially for stalkers. And on the date, Bullseye accidentally gives away that he knows things about her that she hasn't told him. I really appreciate that Julie isn't made out to be horrible. Her reaction is completely understandable when so much time has been spent on Bullseye and so little on her. Like, you know, if this had been made like 20 or 30 years earlier, she would have been made out to be just this horrible person. Why doesn't she just understand kind of thing? So, yeah. And Julie paid for dinner, so they can't go Dutch, and out of solidarity, the camera does instead. Let's see, and yeah, when Dex gets home, punches the wall, the blood on the t-shirt triggers his OCD, and we get some very De Palma camera work. Love the camera work in this episode and season, but especially this episode. 
like I've, uh, I'm not that familiar with the the Emmys, but if they give like cinematography, if they give a cinematography award, I feel like the certainly this episode should have been at the very least a nominee, and honestly, possibly a winner. I guess you know I, I don't know everything that was on TV the same year season or whatever. Now. Yeah, and we get a flashback to Matt going to the apartment. He left just before the raid started and is aware there's a bolo on him. And that brings us to the next episode, The Devil You Know. And... Dex tossing and turning in bed, the camera underlining how he's all out of sorts. And Dex almost commits suicide, but then Fisk calls and further manipulates him. And the power is cut, and Dex shows up as a fake Daredevil. Love the long take of the fight between Daredevil and Dex, and then Matt hiding from Dex, who, you know, makes... Yeah, makes lethal ranged weapons out of office equipment, as he is wont to do. Real horror movie vibe, and just... Yeah, and this is, you know, this is a, um, if I recall, this is the office for the, this is the, this is the paper, you know, so every table has office equipment, you know, it's, it's like, and, and yeah, you know, this dude can kill you with, of you know, a pencil or a stapler or, you know, whatever. So yeah, that was, a, that was very, very clear. I, I, I hope whoever came up with Let's make a horror movie vibed scene of, you know, fake Daredevil fighting real Daredevil using all these, you know, office equipment things as ranged weapons. You know, if he didn't get a raise, I feel like he certainly deserved one. Let's see. And, and yeah, it was like, you know, this scene of, like, we see him killing several people there, you know, to, to really make Daredevil look terrible. I really love that Franklin and Karen both try heroics after Dex steps into the room. You know, Franklin, if Foggy straight up punches, you know, tries to, yeah. And he shoots. Jasper greets Karen, and Ray thinks Daredevil was behind it, so that was, yeah. And... Episode 7, Aftermath. And we see that Fisk has a secret door leading to a control room where he can monitor the agents monitoring him, which I think makes for monitorception. Maggie made a mistake, owns up, stitches him, suggests he look for a suit. It's, it's, you know, making... She's she's a more interesting female character for making mistakes and also apologizing for them. Let's see. And we see Betsy. Daredevil asks Melvin some questions. And Melvin goes, I burnt down the workshop where we used to go because it reminds me of Fisk. Marcy is relieved when Foggy comes home alive and they have some life-affirming sex. And Ray's boss is going to call a DIC or a dick. And Melvin temporarily traps Daredevil. Daredevil gets free. There's a fight. Melvin fares a lot better than the first time they fought, but this time he knows Daredevil, and he's not fighting for himself. He's fighting for Betsy. The FBI were supposed to find Matt Murdock with the new Daredevil suit. And Melvin and Daredevil fight FBI. I'm starting to see why some people said that the FBI are very easy to stop in this season. And... Yeah, and we close on Daredevil breaking into Ray's place, telling him there's an, an FBI agent is pretending to be him, and Ray is ready to hear him out. Episode 8, Upstairs, Downstairs. 
And we open up on Bullseye going home, tidying up, listening to tapes after pretending to be Daredevil. And Dex approaches Julie on the run, tries to explain himself. And at the coffee shop, she does agree to help him. Later in the episode, he texts her and he te she texts back that she doesn't want anything to do with him, blocked his number. At the time, I thought, oh, maybe she changed her mind in between the two. If not, maybe she was just pretending to agree to help so that he would leave. And, you know, either case, again, you know, the writing really allows us to sympathize with her. Obviously, what Dex is doing is completely unacceptable, even though from watching the show, we understand why he's doing it. But yeah, later, you know, once we realize that Julie is dead, yeah, like, um, obviously Dex didn't kill her, but, you know, Fisk had someone kill her, take the phone, and wait for Dex to text, and then text that back so that... He would, because, you know, if he texted her and just get got no response, he might think there's something wrong, but he's ready to believe that she abandoned him. And... Yeah, Ray and Daredevil looking for the suit at, at Dex. I like the line, oh, the suit. And Dex returns home, hears that they're there, ricochets bullets at them. And we hear from the Mercer tapes that he used to kill birds. So I guess you just had to look near him to find a dead bird cemetery. Great debate between Blake Tower and Foggy. So tense between Karen and Fisk as she tries to provoke him and he tries to intimidate her. She leans in close and whispers, I killed your Wesley. And it's clear he's about to attack her, but Foggy stops it. Dex burns the tapes, and the episode ends on Matt realizing Maggie is his mother, like in the comics. Which brings us to episode 9, Revelations. Matt is understandably upset about being lied to, about his mother being alive. We get a flashback that shows his parents meeting. So, so yeah, uh, by the end of this season, it's still not confirmed, but I figured the call we saw Jack Murdoch make not long before that, you know, right, I think it was, yeah, it was pretty close to the fight, was to Maggie, you know, asking, you know, you really have to, to take care of Matt. And the SAC shoots Win, and Felix helps with the frame job, that, like, I thought she would. I, I was surprised that she was in on it because she was trying to talk Ray out of making the deal. So, yeah. And, you know, the thing of, you know, ah, oh, you know, yeah, she's got a difficult teenage daughter, you know, and then we find out. And, the, and then she's like, I used to have two children. You know, they, they made it look like a hit and run. And, you know, d divorcing her husband is going to make him safer. But, yeah. Let's see. I'm not your boss anymore, Ray. Wilson Fisk is chilling. And Matt goes to live in the old boxing place. Boy, I hope somebody cleaned the ring after him and Electra had sex in the second season. I really like the scenes with Marcy and Franklin. Obviously, we have to work on your closing. And Daredevil imagines Jack speaking to him. I really like that element this season. I thought that worked really well. And it wasn't really something that they had done. You know, but, but yeah. It was... Yeah, it wasn't really necessary before. You know, but here, it really was... Like, we had to have... You know, him... Yeah, you know, some of the time it's Fisk trying to provoke him. Some of the time, some of the time it's Jack trying to, you know, yeah. So some of the time he says, "No, Matt, you're right about the, you're right about this thing, but you know this and that thing." And 
you know, Karen and Maggie have a conversation, and Maggie convinces, I've abandoned my child. The church has been hiding pedos, I mean people, for 2,000 years. This better be important, bro. Marcy's getting the frozen eggs talk. And we learn that Franklin's family will go to jail because of a loan if Franklin doesn't change his statement. I really appreciate the, the res resolution of that, that, you know, by the end of the, the season, he didn't change his statement, but the, you know, what, what was it that the, um, some, was it, was it D.A. Blake Tower, maybe? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Someone was not going to prosecute these, you know, this little old lady and, and her fella for this this loan, but the, the brother does, Theo, does have to pay back the money. And we learn that Kingpin is why Ray's sister is off her health care, why he needs the money, so just, yeah. Very compelling when Jack Murdoch morphs, thankfully off screen, into Kingpin. Daredevil imagines beating Kingpin to submission, snapping his neck. It, it would have been very distracting if the morph was was on screen. And at the end of the day, I mean, it is basically, it's the it's the angel on his shoulder, devil on his shoulder situation, and it's showing that he's, it's getting more and more difficult for him to not listen to the devil on his shoulder. What the hell is this? An opportunity, Mr. Star. May I call you Patrick? The tax just became 25%. Well, yeah, you gotta make up for the guy you just had bullseye kill. If you tipped him, are you calling him a devil tipper? And... Yeah, Daredevil went to the apartment where Fisk lives, finds the control room, says he wants to kill Fisk. Hears that Karen has been found in the church, and Fisk wants to have her killed. So, yeah. And, and it's really, like, really good acting from, I think, the character was called Shelby, according to the subtitles. You know, the, the woman who's always at the control, you know. Because, like, she doesn't know if Daredevil is going to hurt her. The moment he cuts the power, like, what else is it going to be? Like, she knows. She's not stupid. She she didn't get to, to, you know, sit in monitors for a crime lord by being stupid. The moment that the power goes out, you know, it'd be one thing if, like, one of the signals went out. But all of the power goes out. Okay, that's that's not an accident. You know, so, so yeah, that's... And and she's basically she's she's sitting there she's she's been frozen stiff since the moment he cut the power and he gets in there and you know yeah she tells him I have to tell Fisk that you were here you know he obviously he's gonna ask and she can't just say I don't know I guess I fell asleep you know she has to tell him yeah Daredevil was here so yeah and that brings us to episode 10 Karen so this episode does the TV show has just gotten us really excited to see what happens in the present so let's go to the past thing thankfully as is often the case it's a really excellent flashback and it's not the whole episode yeah based on this episode I definitely understand why Karen's father said not to come home when she called him recently yeah you know, even it's it's been years, but it's still like he can't really forgive her for that. And we see she was quite the party girl selling coke, but also working at the family business diner. Nothing's permanent. Um, excuse you, markers, tattoos. Legitimately tragic backstory of Karen's mother dying of cancer and apparently hating the diner in the town. And given that the diner has a woman's name and it's not Karen's, it was almost definitely named after her mother. You know, the, the diner is named Pennies. On the dollar. And Kevin burns down Todd's home. Todd beats Kevin. Karen shoots Todd. So now we know what she meant when she told Wesley it wasn't the first time she shot anybody before. And we saw Todd had a gun. You know, he practiced firing it earlier. I, f I forget if we also saw her practice it, but it stands to reason that at some point, you know, she had, you know, a, a lot of p 
people who casually use guns as, you know, in this case for target practice, a lot of them will at some point introduce their partner to it as well. Now, let's see. And Bernie's gonna claim it was only Kevin in the car. I guess he's just fed up with her coke nose blood in his eggs. Thank God your mother isn't alive for this. You're welcome. Will you people finally learn to trust my plan now? And Bullseye attacks Mass to draw out Karen, who won't let them suffer for her. And Dex is just about to attack Karen, and at this range, almost definitely she wouldn't have time to duck. Just goes, to, but just goes to show. If you're gonna shoot, shoot. Don't talk. Then Daredevil shows up, and just like he said, this time he fights up close while Bullseye tries to get distance, use ranged attacks. And Karen goes, I'm the one that you want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Karen knocks Dex off the balcony using a cross. The first time in almost 2,000 years, a cross has actually been useful for a good cause. And that brings us to episode 11, Reunion. And we open on Dex clearly being really messed up by losing. What about the rectory? Wow, that sounds painful. And Daredevil admits to Karen he intends to kill Fisk, and she talks to him, explaining how she feels about her accidental killing of her brother. And it's very realistic. I really appreciate media the challenges and the notion that killing is fun and cool, especially within the comic book adaptation, which I love comic books, I love these adaptations. Let's be honest, there's a bit of a history of them making it seem like, oh, it's just fun and cool when the good guy kills the bad guys, when in real life that really isn't. And I'm not expecting, you know, the, the MCU movies are a bit more, you know, popcorn entertainment. They're not quite as dark as the, the Marvel Netflix shows. So yeah, this is where that kind of thing would be covered. And... So yeah, this episode shows law enforcement trying to get Daredevil and one other person. So it's very similar to that season one episode where Daredevil and one of the two Russian brothers were in a building with cops outside. And Karen tells Daredevil she and Foggy are not going to abandon him. That's pretty weak bullshitting. You want to try that again? Okay, you got me. Dana just asked me if I can fill 30 seconds. She's now starting to sound kind of desperate about it, which is too bad, because she's usually fun to talk to. And that's 30 seconds. Very clever for Foggy to claim to be Karen's lawyer. Make sure she's arrested by the police, not the feds. I love how both the feds and the um, Brett, the cop, want, him to sh want Foggy to shut up. And Kingpin is denied rabbit in a snowstorm. The woman explicitly compares him to the Nazis, explaining that of the seven members of her family, only two of them survived the ghetto. Very, very gripping, and yeah. And in this episode, we see that when Dex is overwhelmed, we hear the noise of a swarm, which I quite like. You know, in earlier episodes, they would spend more time on him, but in these last couple of episodes, sometimes we only see him very briefly, so a swarm noise is a good shorthand, you know, for the kind of, yeah, for him being overwhelmed. It's, you know, an, another thing that earlier, you know, he would imagine Mercer and Julie saying, you know, you are alone, I don't want to help you, That you know, these kinds of things. Things that they didn't actually say, but he, you know, they're the only people he feels can make him... Um, Make him okay. You know, so imagining losing them, to him it is like they are intentionally abandoning him. Let's see. Foggy has part of a plan. And Kingpin beats his assistant to death in the car. Never go near this man in a car. And the broken vase makes Ray think that his family has already been taken. That, that was really great, because like... Because immediately you think, if somebody just dropped the vase, they would clean, you know, um, Sima would clean it up, clean it up, 
almost immediately, you know, so the fact, and then he gets up there and, you know, and, and, um, ah, I'm afraid I forget the, the name of the kid, but, but yeah, you know, the son is like, I'm sorry, dad, I knocked off the, over the vase, mom said she would clean it up later, am I in trouble, <laughs> you know, because he just, he just, he can tell that his father is upset about something, and, you know, he's, he's a kid, so he thinks that the reason his father would be upset is that he himself did something wrong, so, yeah. And... Let's see... Yeah. The, you know, the FBI people do show up. Not long after that, there's a shootout, and Daredevil fights some of the feds, reveals his identity to Ray, and the episode ends. That was really, really intense. Like, holy crap. The, the... Yeah. Yeah, and and wasn't it like uh, it was something like that the um, both Sima and the the their son were in the in the bathroom. Was he maybe brushing his teeth or something? And she was checking to make sure he did it proper. Something like that. Uh, let's see. That brings us to the penultimate episode. One last shot. We open on Fisk and Vanessa being reunited, and Brett's mom will protect Ray and his family. Yeah, I guess, you know, cigar, cigars go a long way. And Seema confronts Ray about the lies, says that he can't be trusted anymore, which did, like, when I, when I then, um, you know, after his death, you know in in the in the finale after his death when she says that she believes what the FBI are saying about Ray you know i was like oh i mean she did say but then turns out you know the video message did let's see sway her ah uh, let's see and Wilson tries to please Vanessa. She later said she's worried she'll feel lonely, like she felt lonely, you know, when she was in Spain. Her pain in Spain was plain on her face. Great scenes as the DA, Matt, Foggy, and Ray make a deal. Ray calls his son. And Dex killed the Holocaust survivor for the painting to get back in Kingpin's good graces. Claims to Vanessa he's the new Wesley. So, yeah. You know, even Kingpin has some limits, and Dex basically doesn't under the right, you know, under certain circumstances, he doesn't have any limits. Very tense when Fisk has people fire at the car that has Daredevil and Ray in it, and Daredevil tells Ray where to fire and takes out a few of them on his own. But Kingpin also got to the juror. And Vanessa insists to Wilson that she wants to be part of his world. But she's not white, so that'll definitely set off the grifters and the fandom menace. And Ray records the the message, the, the last message for his family. And I really like that, you know, at first it seems like, oh, he's just gonna say, you know, say his goodbyes to his family. But no, he also had a plan. Uh, let's see... And Vanessa makes the decision that Dex should kill Ray. And we close on Daredevil saying, They tried it Foggy's way, he's gonna handle it as Daredevil. And that brings us to the finale. So, a new napkin. Oh, right, the, yeah, the one that um, Foggy writes their names on. So yeah, the opening shows Fisk and Daredevil at the same time. And Fisk is going to marry Vanessa. And um, I think it's Karen who notes that, you know, if Daredevil actually kills Kingpin, he'll never forgive himself. And... Yeah, Foggy goes to, you know, he he's called into the FBI for, you know, uh, uh, for questioning. And, you know, he goes up to, to Dex and he's like, I always help out the, 
you know, the, the FBI when, when they ask. In fact, and he takes a selfie of himself next to Dex, and, you know, yeah, uh, I just sent this to all of the police who know that I'm at the FBI helping you. So, just, yeah. And, yeah, you know, Seema went to the FBI pretending that she believes that Ray killed Wynn. And I really like the, the you know, they, they use the um, pen or pencil or something like that to to write because they are being listened to, but, you know, they are alone in the room, attorney-client privilege, so just, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Daredevil calls, using Felix Manning's phone, calls uh, Dex and talks to him about the, the therapy stuff and... Yeah, the, you know, points out about Julie. And, yeah, uh, Karen and Foggy talk about the dying declaration. And, I mean, I get, maybe that's true. I, I don't know if it's, you know, but that could very well be an actual rule of, like, law that, um, if, yeah, the, you know, you're less likely to lie because what do you have to, to lose kind of thing. And Dex sees that Julie was fridged. I would almost say that's odds, like a parody, like they're playing with it. No, that's just a plain old fridging. So that was, yeah, oddly. Usually the writing in these are, is, is very good. They, they tend to avoid stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, let's see. But yeah, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the um, it wasn't Julie texting, I never want to see you again. That was, you know, the the person that killed, you know, Julie for Fisk, texted the, yeah, te texted Dex the thing that would be most useful for, for Fisk. So, you know, saying that she doesn't want more to do with him. And, yeah, Dex dresses up as Daredevil again with Julie riding shotgun. Let's see, and, yeah, the dying declaration is now on everybody's cell phone, and just, yeah, that was very, very nicely done. And the real Daredevil follows Dex's trail. And there's a shootout and a fight. Absolutely epic climax in the in the penthouse with Bullseye Daredevil and Fisk. And just yeah. Really, really cool with with basically, you know, Bullseye wants to kill. You know, he's basically he most wants to kill Fisk. But he would also like to kill Vanessa. And Daredevil is there to make sure that Bullseye doesn't succeed in killing either of them, but also, you know, trying to stop uh, Fisk. So, yeah, very, very nicely done. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, uh... uh Fisk picks up Dex and breaks his spine. You know, that was... Holy crap. And, you know, Daredevil beats Fisk into submission, just like he imagined. And he starts... You know, he, like, grabs around the neck. But he can't quite, you know, get himself to, to snap the neck. And instead, they, they make a deal, which does make a lot of sense. And it does, like... Obviously, season one already ended with Wilson Fisk being put in prison. So we need something needs to change. It's not enough to just put him back in prison. You know why is why is this different? It's different because now, you know, Daredevil. 
um, it's this thing of, let's see, Vanessa, you know, she's, she's arrested there at the end as well, but she's not going to be, like, if they can't prove, like, actually, yeah, is that, I'm not sure they're even charging her with anything, I think they're just, it's just to get control of the situation, basically, yeah, you know, and, yeah, um, Daredevil, Matt Murdock, has heard Felix Manning say that Vanessa was the one who gave the order to kill, you know, for, for Dex to kill Ray, which means that she is not just an accessory to, to you know, she, uh, I forget what it's called exactly, but, you know, Dex is guilty of murder one of a federal officer, which is substantially, you know, that's a much bigger deal than, like, a civilian or... It's probably also a bigger deal than a than a regular cop, I figure. But yeah, and you know, yeah, she called for it, knowing that it would be carried out. It, you know, she didn't like playfully say, "Hey, wouldn't it be fun if?" No, no. She said, "We should eliminate the threat. Send Dex." So, you know, and and let's see the the. Um... Yeah, Felix could probably get a deal in exchange for talk, for for saying that under oath, and yeah, you know he he doesn't really have anything to gain from the yeah. So so that was a, a really great yeah. I I really appreciate it. you know basically from the start of this season it is this thing of you know Daredevil. You know, Matt has lost so much, and, you know, he, yeah, he specifically says that the fact that Kingpin is being let out, he feels like that's God mocking him and punishing him. And, you know, God is why he doesn't kill, because it's a mortal sin. So, you know, the... the and and we yeah and we were told in season one that he has the devil in him, which is also that's also brought up, brought up again in this season. So yeah, you know some part of him does want to go that far. Yeah, um, I really they they did a really great job on all three seasons. You know it it's important that none of them is just the same as the others because then it's like, well, why are we why are we watching? you know, but they explore different things. so yeah, I, I really appreciate that. you know, yeah, yeah, um season two and season three do both have Daredevil almost going and killing and and breaking um just in general like going going too far. but here it's because he feels like he has been abandoned you know he he thinks that god is you know has turned against him or maybe always was against him kind of thing where in season two it was because he saw other people do you know it's there's a um in this he feels alone and he is you know he spends very as as some reviewers have noted he spends fairly little time with foggy and karen this season where you know season two there was also um let's see for for at least some of season two if karen wasn't but, but you know um foggy only left the the law firm that Matt was working at at the end of season two, if I recall. Certainly, some of season two they were working together. Um, yeah, yeah, for uh, for Frank, you know. So, yeah, this is the first time like Daredevil is basically isolated. You know, yeah, Maggie and Father Lantum are technically present, but it's not like they're the most like they don't love that he's there and. This whole so so yeah you know here it was this thing of you know he felt hopeless before he felt like he had lost all hope first when he turned blind and then again when he became an orphan and now you know he lost Electra he lost some of his hearing you know yeah it it really was a yeah so so yeah 
um, if if someone loses everything, will they lose who they are? Is this season? Whereas season two, it was if the people you trust do something wrong, will you have the strength to not also do that wrong? Because Electra's going around breaking, you know, going further than Matt would all over the place, and they are, you know, they used to be together, they're still clearly into each other in season two, so, yeah, and and then this thing of, you know, at the same time you have the Punisher out there who's, you know, who's also challenging Matt's, you know, methods, and so, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And, you know, season one was building up, you know, Matt believes, Matt and Wilson Fisk both believe that they are saving Hell's Kitchen. They just have different ways of doing it. And one more talk between Matt and Maggie. I really appreciate that, because I don't really blame him for leaving without talking to her last time, but it would really... Because, again, you know, as, as much as she can be, like, she is not very patient with him in this season but she's not a bad person it's just you know the the you know there there are several things about the situation that really frustrate her and some of those things are choices of his you know she does not approve of vigilantism um and the let's see she does not like that they have to you know, that that he's at their place. But, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, she's, she's not a bad person. She has devoted her life to helping orphans, you know. So, yeah, um, I really appreciate, again, like so much media, maybe not the most recent, but other, you know, would not actually follow up on that would not allow and and a lot of young men would walk away thinking oh i guess she's just awful and i really like matt's uh, you know i i forget uh, eulogy i think it's called at the funeral for father lantum and you know even foggy and and marcy were there like i get why karen's there he kind of saved her life you know, so that's, yeah. I'm not entirely sure if... Did Foggy even meet Father Lantum? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And, and you know, Marcy certainly didn't. But, you know, she, she goes where Foggy Bear goes. And, you know, Marcy had guessed that Foggy did not want to be a lawyer at the big firm anymore. And the trio reunite and argue over what order Paige's name should be in on the, you know, the new napkin. Oh, he wrote our names on the napkin. How could you possibly know that? Because I was thinking the same thing. And at the very, very end, we see that Bullseye's spine is being fixed up and his eyes, you know, snap open and very, very cool. And they're... Like, if I understand correctly, they were gonna, like, it's some kind of, like, metallic spine thing. So, yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. And very comic booky. so, so, yeah. Um, boy, I hope that they follow up on as much as they can of what was... Because this, the, there's so much that they could, they could very easily make part of the the new the Disney Plus Daredevil show um born, Daredevil born again you know but yeah i i figure they probably won't go as far as the Marvel Netflix shows not you know as as dark and and that kind of thing um but yeah, I, I definitely see how they could, you know, yeah, so we know Charlie Cox and, um, I can't believe I'm, I'm blanking on his name, um, I'll find it real quick, because I know that he was in the movie, holy crap, now I can't remember, okay, uh, looking up the show then, 
There we go. Vincent D'Onofrio. Both of them are going to be in Daredevil Born Again. Um, and then we don't know too much else. And, you know, technically, I'm not sure it has been said if that is, uh, like, is, is that the Daredevil of these three seasons? Or is it that a Daredevil... Because it does seem like... It, I feel like some of the stuff that happened over the course of these three seasons would have made an impression on someone else in the MCU. Some, someone not in one of the Marvel Netflix shows. So, yeah. Now, um... Yeah, that... Yes, so, the, the, um, ranking all of the, all of the seasons of Marvel Netflix that I've seen so far, so, the, the two, the only two left now are, uh, Punisher Season 2 and Jessica Jones Season 3, so, all of the other ones, worst to best, I love all other than Iron Fist Season 1, Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Luke Cage Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, Jessica Jones Season 1. And I am just really quickly going to make sure that I have that. There we go. Okay. Overall, I think this show, the three seasons of it, is a better adaptation than the 2003 movie, but I do still really like that one. Obviously, that one puts you in Matt's place more, since it had the budget to do that. You know, the... the Ah. Uh, his... Um, the, the sonar, for example. It shows the action more. The cinematography is even more comic booky. It lacks the depth of this since it has a much lower running time. This is more brutal since it can be. That one's a PG-13 movie. The pacing is better in the movie, determined by the story, not a Netflix-mandated amount of episodes. I like the small-time criminals in both, like Turk in this and R.A. the Rugged Man in the film. I largely prefer the characters, both performances and writing of the show to that movie, and the and the casting. But I again, I still do like the the various, yeah. I suspect I may have some Catholic viewers, so if you are one, I want to make it clear I am what I'm about to say is not aimed at you. I'm talking about writing fiction. Since I doubt Disney Plus is going to go there, I think it is a missed opportunity for the show to not confront that Catholics today know the Catholic Church has gone out of its way to not fight but hide their pedophile priests and then say that LGBTQ people are evil. Maybe they could have focused one of these three seasons partially on Matt struggling with that, maybe deciding he's going to do what he can to fight for the people victimized by Catholic pedophile priests fix the Catholic Church from the inside, or even to change denominations, and certainly that would have fit very well with this season where he is already questioning God. So, uh, let's see, yeah, I have a couple of critic quotes. Season 3 brings out the pain and evil for the ma for all major characters, very true. Has the best action score and look of all three seasons, yes. Is a neo noir crime thriller. Some people will find the slow pacing of the first episodes frustrating, and some have said there's too much development for Bullseye. Not not just that you know, oh wow, he certainly gets a lot, but too much. And I mean, f considering that that we aren't getting a season four, and that Disney Plus may not bring back Bullseye, it it certainly is a lot. Um, I don't know that I would say that it was too much, um, but but yeah. So that is it for the the Daredevil. I um, it might be a couple of days before I record the review itself because I want to try to watch all the videos that I found on here on YouTube, and there are a lot. Um, there there are a lot that were made after the premiere of the the final season on Netflix. And that means that I can't be sure 
that they don't have spoilers. And, you know, I'm really glad that I, like, I had heard some stuff, you know, but there's definitely stuff that I didn't, you know, so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll try to make it this week at least. And yeah, um, really gonna miss this, um, the, the, um, uh, there we go. Yeah. Really gonna miss Daredevil. Really gonna miss the, the supporting cast. And, yeah. Um, let's see. I think that is everything. So, yeah. Um, let me know in the comments what did you think of this season. Is there anything that... I didn't talk about in this video that happened in this season that you really wanted to hear my opinion on. And yeah, that is it for this one. So, the yeah, there will be at least one more video this week. So, catch you then. Bye-bye.